Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakal Kadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone Ruel, and peace, love, and salutation to you, Akim, that's pushing his truth and truth and sincerity. I'm going to start off from Job 33 and 14. It says, For the Most High speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Verse 15, in a dream and a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened up the ears of men and sealed up their instruction. All right, and the title of this lesson is called It Was All Good Just a Week Ago. Pull up this article from uh, RT News. All right. It says, even if Russia had sunk British warship, it wouldn't have started World War III because the United States and the UK know they can't win such a conflict, says Vladimir Putin. So he's basically saying, you don't want that smoke. <laughs> and uh, like I tired it, uh, it was all good just a week ago because on it, it was exactly maybe like two weeks ago. It wasn't a week ago, but hey, you get the title. You know, you know Jake says that it was all good just a week ago. Now, we're coming on the hills uh, two weeks ago from this uh, meeting between Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin in Geneva, uh, Switzerland, all right? And that was uh, two weeks ago, all right? So it says, this This is from two weeks ago. It says, I'm going to just read this off top. It says, um, when President Joe Biden meets Russian President Vladimir Putin in Geneva on Wednesday, it will be one of the most closely watched pieces of geo geopolitical theater this year. Biden's summit with Putin in Switzerland, chosen for its his history of political neutrality, will not be the first time the two have met, but it will be the first meeting since Biden became United States President, the so-called leader of the free world. The Biden-Putin summit is expected to strike a sharply different tone in the meeting that took place in July 2018 between then-President Donald Trump and Putin in Helsinki, I believe that's in Finland. Trump insisted that the two leaders met meet at the beginning of the summit without any aides present, stirring concerns that the former KGB officer would outflank his American counterpart. Continuing on, it says this Wednesday's meeting between Biden and Putin comes on the heels of Biden's first international trip as president, where he reaffirmed alliances with G7 leaders and NATO allies. At NATO's headquarters, Biden told reporters that he consulted with other world leaders in the days of heaven meeting of his meeting with Putin. He says every world leader here, most of them mention it and thank me for meeting with Putin, Biden said Monday. It says I had discussions with them about what they thought was important from their perspective and what they thought was not important. He said, adding that his counterparts appreciated his transparency and coordination. Now we're seeing a difference a week later and um, I'm probably going to use this picture of them shaking hands as a screenshot because literally it was all good just a week ago. Okay? They were shaking hands, they had good discussions, but this is what's happening now. Fast forward to uh, July 1st, 2021. President Vladimir Putin has slammed the violation of Russian territorial waters by British warship HMS Defender as a provocation. He also claimed that London's American allies had a hand in last week's incident near Crimea. You know, like, it, these meetings that they have, they shake hands and they give you the illusion that everything is good when, and it's really not. Okay. However, apparently casting doubt on NATO's Article 5 collective defensive pact, the Russian leader claimed that even if Moscow had sunk the vessel, it wouldn't have led to World War III. And this this is the really the time that we're in. These leaders know what time it is, man. The only people that don't know what time it is is you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And we published this and broadcast to let you know that World War III is coming. The RFID chip, which the market of beasts is coming. Famine and inflation is coming. Because we are the her her heralds, okay, to give you this word. 
President Vladimir Putin has slammed the violation. I already read that, excuse me. However, apparently casting doubt on NATO's Article 5 collective defense pact, the Russian leader claimed that even if Moscow had sunk the vessel, it wouldn't have led to World War III because the provocateurs know they couldn't be able to win. Last week, the British naval ship HMS Defender entered the country's territorial waters and traveled three kilometers, almost two miles inside the frontier near Camp Fielding in Crimea. According to Russia's Ministry of Defense, the Coast Guard targeted warning shots at the boat. This has been disputed by the British, but video evidence suggests that Russian versions of events is more accurate. Okay. According to London, the destroyer was making a peaceful passage through the territorial waters of Ukraine according in accordance with international law. The UK does not recognize Crimea as part of Russia. So, hey, you can read the rest of that on RT News. All right, this is from uh, yesterday, actually, uh, uh, June uh, 30th. Hey, but we're in that brink of World War Three. all right? And all that, all those talks that Biden and Putin had last week, it went right out the window, man. Let's read that again. Job 33 and 15, In a dream and a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened up the ears of men and sealed up their instructions. So the instructions yesterday was Putin was like, to hell with you. You know, you don't want that smoke. Even if this did start World War Three, you weren't going to make it. And this simply fulfills the scriptures, man. Uh, this is Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Joel 3 and 9. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. The, this is actually, this is talking about the heathens. Not those Gentiles in the New Testament who had obtained salvation or actually Israelites. I'm talking about the natural born Gentiles, the other 17 nations. Prepare war. We're in a time of war like it mentions in uh, Ecclesi uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. And that's what these nations like Russia are saying. Let like they're, they're, they're being strong now, man. They're, they got Russia, through the Spirit of the Lord, all right, has that nuclear capability along with these other nations. And the Spirit is going to, the Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Shah is going to have them turn on the United States. So all these peace talks that happened two weeks ago, hey, they're null and void pretty much right now, man. We're in a time of war. Uh, verse 11, assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about, thither call thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Verse 12, let the heathen be wakened. Let the heathen be wakened in that spirit of war, man. Okay? We're not in a time of peace just because everything is opening back up here in America. Alright? Doesn't mean that uh, war is not on the way. It says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. And that's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to fight for us. So there's no need, you know, you got all these uh, PSYOP shootings. And, you know, the persecution is going to start to hit. And they're going to say, we did this and did that. But we have to wait on the Lord, man. We can't take matters into our own hands. You know, the Lord is fighting for us. Uh, the small battles as well as the big battles, okay? So we're we're in that time of war, so you just got to be on your toes and know what the hell is going on out here, man. This, this is going to be quick and uh, to the point. This is First Thessalonians 5 and uh, 1. But of, the times and of, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Not for us that's in the know-how spirit, which we continue to pray for and continue to get understanding in these matters that pertain to prophecy. It's for, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, like that meeting last week, you know, they met in Geneva, Switzerland, it was supposed to be a so-called neutral site uh, Switzerland is supposed to be a so-called uh, peaceful country. 
Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right, this destruction is going to come as a thief in the night. It's going to overtake people suddenly, man. It says, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Yeah, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, we had this understanding, and we reported to our people, namely the elect, because two thirds ain't going to get it, man. You know, um, so we're not in darkness like our like our people out here, man. All right. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So this is basically just a little update. These es these tensions are going to escalate. You know, it was all good just a week ago. But the Lord has other things in mind. So with that, Shalom.